Hi there, Mark from Lightmap here. I'm going to demonstrate how I'm going to use HDR Light Studio to light these golf clubs. Um, this is using HDR Light Studio 8 Drop 1. I'll be featuring, you know, user interface improvements, the new scrim light, and how all these things come together for me to light this shot and show you how I'll approach it. I don't particularly know what I'm going to do. I'm going to make it up as I go along in terms of approach this as I would if I was trying to light a shot professionally. And uh, let's see where we go. So you get a default gradient um, in the background. It's a good starting point. At least you can see your objects. So that's great. And the first thing I want to do is think about lighting the shafts here. So first off, let's get a scrim light. Now we can make a brand new one, which is what I think I'll do from the toolbar. So we'll just make the scrim light. And then I will click on this view to position that light here. And then we want to scale that light to be bigger. So I'm going to press R and then we will drag and scale that to be bigger. And then what I want to do is I want to just like move this up. So there's a few ways I can do this. I can just come to this view and I can drag it up. Or if I'm in this view, I can do shift W. This will put me into move relative. So as I drag upwards, it will move the light up. I can let go, drag downwards, move it down. For the purposes of this, I'm just happy to move it in here like this. So, okay, there's a scrim light on one side of the shaft. Let's duplicate that, control D, and then let's click on the model here to put it on this side. Well, I need to press W to move, click on that side. Okay, it's over there, and I'm going to manually just drag this so it's more, more vertical. Okay, so let's uh, get this background and turn this right down to two. Very, very faint. Oh, too faint. Let's do ten. Okay, right. So now we can really start to see these lights here illuminating the shaft. So that looks pretty good. So a decision to make is if we make those lights taller so that the effect of the light comes around and around the top here. So do we want to do that? I'm not actually sure. I think I'd like another light to take care of this top section. So I think if anything, I want to make these lights shorter. So you can select lights by right clicking on the shot and we'll pick it see in the background and it's seeing the scrim light. So what we can do is we could come up here and we can make the background non-selectable. Then when I right click on the model, it will instantly pick the lights because there are not two lights underneath. So it uses light paint, whoops, it uses light paint uh, to select the light. So right clicking selects the light. So with this light selected, I'm going to come over here, I'm going to press Shift R for non-proportional scale and I'm going to change the height so that the light doesn't go all the way around here. I want it a bit shorter just to light the shaft basically. And what I'm going to do as well is right click to pick this one, make that shorter and I'm going to move that downwards. Now, if I move it downwards, it's pointing to the center of the dome. It's going to angle. So what we need to do for both of these lights, I want them to stay vertical. So in the settings, enable advanced rotations, V lock for vertical lock. And we'll do the same on the other light. V lock. Okay, now as I move this light down, 
it will stay vertical and then this will mean that this gap between the two lights will stay uh, consistent and it won't close up so I like how that is working let's pick this light by right clicking and move this down and then let's just play with the space between these lights okay that looks good so at the moment both of these scrim lights are using the default appearance so if we come across to the appearance tab we can start to just shape the light and make it a little bit more interesting so uh, let's pick this one right click to pick that one and we'll just boost the brightness a bit using the plus and then we'll move where that light effect is within the scrim light so that takes it to the rear this takes it more to the center and I like that kind of fall off from the center around there so we'll, we'll I think we'll keep that as it is. I'll just play with the height a little bit, see if that does anything interesting. In fact, it does. It makes this area, if I bring it more towards the bottom, it just lets that kind of fall off nicely around there. So I'm going to keep that. And then we'll right click on this side to pick the other light. And we'll play with where that is positioned. Again, I'm bringing it to the middle there. I think the whole light can actually move away from the other one so I'm going to do shift W and then we'll just move that light away making an adjustment so move that light away there I like that okay so in terms of the placement of this let's bring this down in the space let's take it up So what we can see is if we place that towards the top, we get a bit of glancing light off of here. If we bring it down to the bottom, we don't. So I think I'd like to control the lighting at the top separately. So we'll keep this down here. And maybe we'll just take the light a bit further away to soften off that light effect. And then on this other light, Maybe we'll just take the light away, spread that effect a little further. Okay, I'm happy with how that's making the, the shafts look. Okay, so we've got this lovely surface at the top of the golf club here, which we need to um, light. So let's create another scrim light, a new one and click directly onto the top here to position that okay and then let's scale that by pressing R and then just drag to the right and make that a bit bigger okay so we can see the light is hitting this surface but also coming around here so I'm going to press W to move the light using light paint and let's just play with a few different positions. In fact, if I solo this light, we can actually see that this lighting is coming from one of the other lights. So it's not that side, it's this side. So I'm just going to check something. If I just move this up, So, by the light being at the bottom, it was catching this, and I don't like that being lit in that way. So I'm actually going to move this up. Now the consequence is that I've got lights up here that I don't necessarily love, but let's just leave it for now. Let's see where we go. Okay, unsolo that light. In fact, I can I can live with that. If I just solo, solo. Yeah, even this light here is bringing a bit of 
light up into that area there. So let's just take it right to the top. Okay, and then increase the brightness. Okay, just leave that as it is. Right, now that's okay, that's okay. So we've got our new light at the top here and that's beautifully um, highlighting the tailor-made logo. If I make it a bit brighter, that looks pretty nice too. And we can just play with the positioning of that scrim light to see if we get anything that's a bit more interesting, a bit more graduation of the light. Now what we could do is we could use the mode here, scrim light position, and I could literally click on here to position where we want this within the scrim light if we want to just play with that, which is a useful tool. I'm quite liking a bit of graduation from here to here. I'll just scale this light down so there's more of a graduation. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'd like to get some light at a glancing angle to describe this outer edge here. So I'm going to make another scrim light click right on the edge and just solo that light. Now let's move it up a little bit until we get it out of the shot and see where we get to. Okay yeah that's doing a nice job just of that edge so in terms of the appearance of this, let's change that to a scrim. And then we get a you know much nicer fall off of the light around that surface. So let's unsolo that. So that's actually quite nice with that edge. I might just scale the light down. Bring it a bit closer. So there's a bit more graduation in that. Now, I kind of feel like I want to create a bit of oomph, a bit of a hot spot over here, and just just something to try. So the great thing about the scrim light is you can do so many effects with it. Um, you can do a little round light. So I'm going to use the scrim light again. I'm going to click on here and then I'm going to make that into a circle by changing the sides. I'm going to scale it down and bring it quite close. Change the spread a little bit. But basically I've got a little circular light there and I'm going to whack up the brightness of that to create a hot spot. Yeah, I kind of like that. Yeah, I like that. I might just bring it up a little bit and see how that changes things. I quite like moving things in this view. Um, you know, it's great using light paint, but when you've got it about in the right place, it's great to just experiment and just see. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Yeah. I like I like the way that's that's doing that. So the shaft's looking good. That's looking good. We can't really tell what's going on in terms of the surfaces inside here. So let's just make another light, click in these surfaces and just see what we need. You see, look, that even already just having a bit of something there is separate helping describe the shape of things in here. So if I just click, click in there, turn the brightness up a bit. Yep, 
we'll just try on some different parts of this model where that little name is there does that help now I think lighting that actual surface with the logo on is the way to go we'll just bump up the brightness of that now let's just check where that is now that is also lighting the shaft there so if we scale this a bit I think we find that this could replace the other light so if we just unsolo I've been very lazy and not named any of these lights just keep adding the lights so let's look at the light soloing that light right that light there will hide that light okay so that light is doing that side of the shaft this new one here so take the brightness of that down a little bit this means I can move the other light my first light over a little bit press W to move it move it over a bit to create a bit of separation which helps describe the shaft a bit better okay I'm going to hide the background okay and we really are not far off so let's do something interesting in the background so if I come to the presets go lights scrim light let's get one of these kind of up lighty effects so I'm going to change the mode to rim drag and drop one of those on we can just move that effect up a bit now that's a bit bright it's a little bit bright okay so I'm pretty happy with that so what we've looked at there is we've been using all the new UI stuff I've hardly touched a slider during this entire lighting process. I've been using the different light paint modes in each of these views by using the keyboard shortcuts when I was in those views and the keyboard shortcuts have been showing on this recording. And I've used the scrim light. What I haven't used is the new polygons. If I right click on here and go to alpha multiply there is the polygon which lets me soften the edge with one setting that's a very very handy so if you were to refine your lighting design um, you could use this just to kind of soften so if I turn this off and you just subtly see the edge on here will soften off because I use the uh, the new polygon um, content type that's been specifically designed to use on the alpha um, so I could go back to any of these lights and turn that on if I wanted to just create a little bit of softness um, but that's it that's that's my demo of using HDR light studio 8 new UI stuff scrim lights it's a very physical way of lighting um, very interactive using the new that new interface. Uh, we hope you enjoy it. Thank you for watching. Bye bye. <laughs>